Greetings! Ik Ben Nate here with Just Bob Productions. Hooray! I recently discovered a fun unit combo that takes advantage of the troop collision physics in Clash Royale. Now, if you've seen my perfect game video, I managed to pull off a three crown victory in just over a minute. You might have noticed me using a giant to push a giant skeleton past the distracting troops into the tower. This, of course, allowed the giant skeleton's bomb to do massive damage to the defending tower while clearing some of the enemies out of the attacking giant's path. While that combo was nice, it cost 11 elixir, which is hard to save up for without getting rushed by your opponent. And you guessed it, my new combo I'm deeming the Knight Rider, which you are seeing here, uses a Hog Rider to accelerate a Knight ahead of the Hog as a meat shield. With just two units, we managed to take down three quarters of this tower's health. I wanted to share with you the rest of this replay, but stay tuned as we will explore several of the uses of this troop combo in the following match. We will also discuss why this works so well and how to counter it. So let's talk about the Hog Rider for a second. One of the weaknesses of the Hog Rider is its tendency to draw the attention of all the enemies around it. Since it has about 900 to 1000 hit points, depending on the level of course, it can usually take a few blows, but its intense focus on buildings leaves it defenseless on its own. And like they say, two are better than one. That's why the Knight and Hog Rider are a match made in heaven. If you can get the defending troops focused on another unit, the Hog Rider will do some major work to a tower. I also think the Knight is really underrated. At only three elixir, his damage and health profile isn't much less than the Hog Rider himself. So with 100 DPS at level six, a Knight paired with a Hog Rider can take down a tower in just under 10 seconds. I also find the Knight to be quite versatile on his own. He can be used to counter a Witch or a Valkyrie and can hold his own in a match against God goblins or skeletons, even when outnumbered. Gotta love a three crown win. Now let's see the Knight Rider in action as a power play and discuss some of the troop complements to this strategy. You typically want to wait at the beginning of a match for as long as you can to thwart off any powerful rush moves. Of course, not taking my own advice, I took the risky tactic of rushing with my Rider on the left, but since I hadn't seen any troops besides the Spear Goblins, I wanted to force a play on the opposite of his starting move. You always want to save a high health or splash damage unit that you can drop as defense after a rush. In this case, I use a wizard as a counter to his witch, along with some arrows to clean up his minions. Of course, my arrows are out, and a goblin barrel comes flying in. <laughs> after countering his goblins with some of my own, there was a bit of a lull in the action as we both saved up our elixir. You don't want to spread yourself too thin by dropping cards rapid fire, as the best plays involve great card combos. You also want to make sure you have enough elixir to mount an effective defense. That's what I was saving my giant skeleton for. It's one of the best cards for blocking an offensive rush. The giant skeleton is like a wall. He dams up the units and clears the field once dead. He also buys me time to save up for a power play. Unfortunately, this witch survives the bomb, but I already have my Knight Rider doing work on the left tower. <laughs> there goes his freeze spell. This is a perfect time to talk counters. The freeze is an effective counter for the knight hog rider combo, but my opponent just did not have enough elixir to deal with them in time. Just like the prince, the knight rider is best countered with cheap troops like the skeleton army or goblins or spear goblins. You typically want to deploy them behind the hog rider in an attempt to keep the knight from attacking the tower and giving your tower a better chance of targeting the hog. Barbarians are also an effective counter, but they tend to focus on the knight from my experience, giving the hog more time to lay damage on the tower. I also find that the Knight Rider is more effective before double elixir as the extra speed is less of an advantage when your opponent can just spam troops in the way. So when using this exploit, make sure you drop the Knight first, then the Hog Rider behind him. Right here is a perfect example of the effectiveness of this attack strategy. The Knight is acting like a meat shield as he's thrusted toward the tower at the Hog Rider's speed. <laughs> with my opponent already admitting defeat, all that's left is to defend with my giant skeleton and run this clock down. Oh man, <laughs> few things bring me as much joy as seeing 12 elixir worth of troops annihilated by the bomb. And with just 15 seconds left, I deploy one more Knight Rider in a last ditch effort to take down a crown tower. I just simply do not have enough time to take one more down. So there you have it, the Knight Rider. Remember to be patient and save your defenses and you will be surprised by what this combo can do for you. It's been Nate with Just Bob Productions. See you on the battlefield. <laughs>